Man, I need a haircut and a shave. Jesus. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're looking at Andy's uh, Evolve GTX, I think it is. I have no idea what all the Evolves are called. Anyway, Evolve GTX. We've already started work on this. You saw we did the Evolve 63mm motor mods. Videos up there and in the description if you want to check it out. Using eBoard Solutions, excellent 63mm motor mounts. Now today, we're going to be looking at the rest of it. Specifically the battery. Um, he has already an upgraded battery, lithium iron, uh, from Kevin Dark, the battery guy. Now when Kevin does his Evolve mods, he uses the standard Evolve BMS and the standard Evolve motor controller. And there's nothing wrong with that as long as you understand the limitations of that system. And I believe that he tells his customers exactly this. You need to be really careful because those standard Evolve components can't take the high amps for long periods of time. They get really hot and it causes problems. The boards lock up, break hard, all kinds of silly stuff happens like that. So Andy has taken the wise decision, in my opinion, to change the electronics for DIY electronics and he's given it to me to do because he doesn't know a great deal about it, which is fine, you know? And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm doing. So let me show you what we're working with right now. Here's the battery, uh, Kevin Dark battery. Like I say, we've already taken the Evolve BMS out, which sat in here. Uh, so we're left with the balance wires. Now I've got a Smart 10S Smart BMS from LLT Power. These are my current ones that I'm using at the moment. They have temperature sensors inbuilt into them, so we'll be able to monitor the temperature of the pack and possibly the temperature of the controller, depending on where we put it. Uh, you also have, you get a Bluetooth module, so you'll be able to talk to the board and see what's going on. And yeah, you get all this wiring. Now, uh, I because I'm attaching these wires to this battery pack, I'm gonna remove this heat shrink and rewire it myself so I know what this looks like inside. Now judging from the wires here, it looks like Kevin's ran them nicely, all parallel to each other. So I'm sure there's not gonna be any problems with that, but I'd rather open the pack and just wire this up correctly. Um, you know, as per these wires really. And yeah, I think this BMS is gonna sit in here nicely. Now I've measured it on the board and it seems to fit with the BMS underneath um, and the battery on top. So that all seems to fit. Also, we have a Unity from Inertia. Now that, coincidentally, fits in this gap exactly and the wire will come around here. So it's like perfect uh, fitment. And then these wires will go outside off to the new motors. So yeah, really, um, there ain't a lot for us to do other than attach this BMS to this pack and then wire everything up and then hopefully we can get it on the board and do motor detection. I don't know if all of that is going to be in this video guys. Um, we're going to certainly do the BMS right now so let's get to it. Right carefully let's remove this heat shrink. Sorry Kevin. It's a beautifully heat shrink pack. Now Kevin traditionally gets quite a lot of aggro from people about his packs, but I'll tell you what guys, I'm looking at this and he's done everything that I would do. His welds look okay, um, he's taken the sharp edges off, he's used braid between the series packs, there's captain tape between the series groups. The only, literally the only thing I would do differently in here is I would use some fish paper where he's used captain tape. That's the only thing I would do differently. I don't think as that is that there's anything wrong with that. That looks fine to me. I mean, there's, there's, there's like I say, the fish paper is the only thing I would put in here, but I'm certainly not gonna be taking this apart to do that. So we're gonna just be going straight in and attaching the BMS. And then that is it really. A bit more captain tape over this, job done. I do see something actually, something here. That's a disaster waiting to happen. That looks like the wires have bent over and fatigued and you can see the copper coming through on all of those wires. So all of those wires are bad. And we need to take care of that. They could short together quite easily. You can actually see here, there's a bit of where the tape was over it. It's like it wore through somehow. I think that these wires must have been folded over. So it looks like, guys, that was being caused by this bit of plastic here fatiguing on those wires. I've spoken to Kevin, he says he normally removes that and must have forgotten to do it on Andy's build, so we'll definitely be removing that um, 
But yeah, I mean, other than that, though, the battery's not too bad. Like I said, I would have just put a bit of fish paper between these. He's used captain tape. Um, that's all. That's the only criticism I would I would give the whole pack. So um, yeah, let's crack on and sort these. Well, we've got to take these. The good thing is, is we've got to we've got to splice these wires anyway. So we've got to cut these wires at some point, and well, why not cut them here? So I don't see anything wrong with that. Let's get a bit of captain tape over each one of these wires that's burnt through because I don't want to, uh, to have any sparkies. So while we're doing this, I've spoken to Kevin and uh, showed him the uh, showed him the wires, and he forgot to remove that bit of plastic in the enclosure, and that's what's caused this. So he's apologised profusely about it and. He must have just missed it, and uh, he, he also said that he now does put fish paper between the series packs. Right then guys, that's the last of those wires swapped over to the new harness, as you can see. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to flip the pack over, and then we're just going to measure these pins, and what we should have is that every time we go from the black wire up one of these, we should go up three and a half volts or whatever the packs charge that we should go up one cell's worth of voltage for each one if we've done that and we get that we've done it correctly happy days we can carry on working on the pack so it's time to check that big shout out to simon one of my subscribers he actually pointed out to me in my last battery making video uh in the tramper one that i didn't show you guys how to check this so that's why i'm showing you now now guys be very careful because you do not want to short the pack 3.8, and then finally, full pack voltage, 38.8 volts. So the other thing I would sort of change about this pack is I would insulate all of these points where the balance um, wires connect to. I don't want this to turn into a how bad is Kevin Dark's battery pack because like I said to you guys, it's not bad at all. This isn't, this isn't a horror show. Uh, certainly not what some of you guys will be expecting, I'm sure. We're just gonna work backwards from this pack. I don't profess to be a battery expert myself. In fact, I've not been making batteries as long as most of you guys. I'm just showing you what, how I would do it, that's all. So you see guys with this one here, you've got a balance lead going over that live terminal. Um, obviously if they touch, then they get, that's a battery short and could result in a fire. So we're just gonna, just gonna carry on going through, making sure anywhere where the wires cross, we're just gonna insulate. Now guys, one thing I want to say is there should be fish paper underneath all of these wires as they cross any cells, but I haven't got enough fish paper. So I'm just doing my best with what I've got to help get this pack back to being as safe as it, as it can be. Now we're pretty much done. Put a temperature sensor in just into there. A random place in the pack. That one's going to go off to the motor controller. And yeah, that flashed up red when we first plugged it in, so I think we're good to go. So there we go guys, battery information now uh, with the smart BMS. Um, don't forget to connect to B-, otherwise this isn't going to work properly. So yeah, as you can see, the pack is pretty well balanced. It's, uh, it's all very good, so that's, a, that's definitely a thumbs up for the Evolve BMS. It did a good job of keeping it all in balance at least. So yeah, basically now I've just got to tidy up a bit of this wiring guys and uh, put in the charger minus and then we're good to go really.